Hi, I'm Lisa Smith, and I'm here to share how that stop motion animation was made. After selecting a story, in this case, a West African folktale, I got to work creating the characters out of cut paper. I made a tortoise with stars that spin on his back and feet that move and a snail with eyes that roll around and four different mouths so he can talk. And there are palm fronds that twist to give them three dimensions so that they can blow in the wind and their coconut palm trunk and then a peacock feather for wisdom and two gourds in size larger and smaller. Here you can see me cutting the holes where wisdom can be stored inside the gourd and making ties to go around the neck of the both larger and smaller turtle. And here you see the movement created from wiggling just two photos back and forth. My friend Kalia came over to record the voiceover. Unfortunately, I didn't get a picture of her recording it, but there's the voiceover she recorded. And then I edited the voiceover using the program Audacity and then took notes of how many seconds each section was and created a log so I could work off a shot log to create the photographs. I then compared the shot log to the script to estimate just exactly how long each section would be and how many frames per second I would shoot each section. Here you can see pictures of my animation table as I begin to set up and work with the lighting. It's a two layer table with a piece of glass and then a piece of plexiglass beneath that. The plexiglass has the tissue paper and then I have the other paper working on the glass surface on top. Here you see me beginning to set up my camera and figure out the position and the lighting. So the animation table again is made out of an old secretary's desk, I think it's called. I've replaced the wooden writing surface with a very thick piece of glass uh, beneath which is a shelf that has a large piece of plexiglass. So there's two layers there that the light can shine through. I light the stand from beneath and then also I light the space from on top as you can see. So at this point, I'm beginning to set the scene and work with what things look like in the camera. I haven't yet begun to animate. I'm just setting things up and setting up my camera. Uh, you can see my camera setup is uh, rather simple. It's not a tripod. It, part of the trick is to get the camera very flat to the surface you're working on. So here you can see I'm beginning to animate. Uh, and the motions are very repetitive. There's a lot of uh, small and repeated motion, and you can see I'm often using a toothpick to move the pieces. I'm using an app called Stop Motion Studio, which is nice because it helps play back the animation as you are creating it so you can see how it's going along the way. It's also possible to take photos and then animate with a video editing program. Animation rates are measured in frames per second. So as you're animating, you can calculate how many frames you might eventually edit in a second.
in the beginning you might edit four frames per second if you think of the second one two three four one two three four one two three four that might be a pace to calculate and eventually uh, things end up animated at maybe 24 or 30 frames per second. This particular animation of mine varies between 15 and 24 frames per second. So then that math helps calculate how many pictures to take based on how much time is going by. For a scene that lasts five seconds, and you're shooting at somewhere between, say, 20 and 25 frames per second, well, that scene will last then somewhere between 100 and 125 photographs. So you're calculating how many photographs go by. This particular, particular animation had somewhere around 1,200 photographs. I then use the program VideoPad to add sound effects and narration to the animation and titles and credits and put it together. And here are the free sources of software that I use, Audacity, Stop Motion Studio, and VideoPad.